The Battle of Okinawa, codenamed Operation Iceberg, 17 was a major battle of the Pacific War fought on the island of Okinawa by United States Army and United States Marine Corps forces against the Imperial Japanese Army. The initial invasion of Okinawa on 1 April 1945 was the largest amphibious assault in the Pacific theater of World War II. The Karama Islands surrounding Okinawa were preemptively captured on 26 March, by the 77th Infantry Division. The 82-day battle lasted from 1 April until the 22nd of June 1945. After a long campaign of island hopping, the Allies were planning to use Kadena Air Base on the large island of Okinawa as a base for Operation Downfall, the planned invasion of the Japanese home islands, 340 miles away. The United States created the 10th Army, a cross-branch force consisting of the U.S. Army 7th, 27th, 77th and 96th Infantry Divisions with the USMC 1st, 2nd, and 6th Marine Divisions, to fight on the island. The 10th was unique in that it had its own tactical air force, and was also supported by combined naval and amphibious forces. Opposing the Allied forces on the ground was the Japanese 32nd Army. The battle has been referred to as the Typhoon of Steel in English, and Tetsu no Arm or Tetsu no Bofu in Japanese. The nicknames refer to the ferocity of the fighting, the intensity of Japanese kamikaze attacks and the sheer numbers of allied ships and armored vehicles that assaulted the island. The battle was one of the bloodiest in the Pacific, with approximately 160,000 military casualties combined, at least 50,000 allied and 84,166 to 117,000 Japanese, 473 to 4 including drafted Okinawans wearing Japanese uniforms. According to local authorities, at least 149,425 Okinawan people were killed, died by suicide or went missing, roughly half of the estimated pre-war population of about 300,000 in the naval operations surrounding the battle, both sides lost considerable numbers of ships and aircraft, including the Japanese battleship Yamato. After the battle, Okinawa provided a fleet anchorage, troop staging areas, and airfields in proximity to Japan in preparation for a planned invasion of the Japanese home islands. Chapter 1 – Order of Battle Chapter 1 – Section 1 – Allied In all, the U.S. Army had over 103,000 soldiers, 39 over 88,000 Marines and 18,000 Navy personnel, 40 at the start of the Battle of Okinawa, U.S. 10th Army had 182,821 personnel under its command, 40 it was planned that Lt. Gen. Simon Bolivar Buckner Jr. would report to Vice Admiral Richmond K. Turner until the amphibious phase was completed, after which he would report directly to Admiral Raymond A. Spruance. Total aircraft in the American Navy, Marine and Army Air Force exceeded 3,000 over the course of the battle, including fighters, attack aircraft, scout planes, bombers and dive bombers. The invasion was supported by a fleet consisting of 18 battleships, 27 cruisers, 177 destroyers-slash destroyer escorts, 39 aircraft carriers and various support and troop transport ships. The British naval contingent accompanied 251 British naval aircraft, and included a British Commonwealth fleet with Australian, New Zealand and Canadian ships and personnel. Chapter 1 Section 2 Japanese The Japanese land campaign was conducted by the 67,000 strong regular 32nd Army and some 9,000 Imperial Japanese Navy troops at Oroku Naval Base, supported by 39,000 drafted local Yukuan people. The Japanese had used kamikaze tactics since the Battle of Leyte Gulf, but for the first time, they became a major part of the defense. Between the American landing on 1 April and 25 May, seven major kamikaze attacks were attempted, involving more than 1,500 planes. The 32nd Army initially consisted of the 9th, 24th and 62nd Divisions and the 44th Independent Mixed Brigade. The 9th Division was moved to Taiwan before the invasion, resulting in shuffling of Japanese defensive plans. Primary resistance was to be led in the south by Lt. Gen. Misuru Yushijima, his chief of staff, 
Lieutenant General Isamo Cho and his Chief of Operations, Colonel Hiramichi Yahara. Yahara advocated a defensive strategy, whilst Cho advocated an offensive one. In the north, Colonel Takehido Udo was in command. The IJN troops were led by Rear Admiral Minoru Ota. They expected the Americans to land six to ten divisions against the Japanese garrison of two and a half divisions. The staff calculated that superior quality and numbers of weapons gave each U.S. division five or six times the firepower of a Japanese division. To this would be added the Americans' abundant naval and air firepower. Chapter 1 Section 2 Subsection 2 Military Use of Children On Okinawa, the Imperial Japanese Army mobilized 1,780 schoolboys aged 14 to 17 years into frontline service as an Iron and Blood Imperial Corps, while Himeori students were organized into a nursing unit. This mobilization was conducted by an ordinance of the Ministry of the Army, not by law. The ordinances mobilized the students as volunteer soldiers for form's sake, in reality, the military authorities ordered schools to force almost all students to volunteer as soldiers, sometimes they counterfeited the necessary documents. About half of the Teketsu Kinatai were killed, including in suicide bomb attacks against tanks, and in guerrilla operations. Among the 21 male and female secondary schools that made up these student corps, 2,000 students would die on the battlefield. Even with the female students acting mainly as nurses to Japanese soldiers they would still be exposed to the harsh conditions of war. Chapter 2 – Naval Battle There was a hypnotic fascination to the sight so alien to our Western philosophy. We watched each plunging kamikaze, with the detached horror of one witnessing a terrible spectacle rather than as the intended victim. We forgot self for the moment as we groped hopelessly for the thought of that other man up there. The United States Navy's Task Force 58, deployed to the east of Okinawa with a picket group of from 6 to 8 destroyers, kept 13 carriers on duty from 23 March to the 27th of April, and a smaller number thereafter. Until 27 April, a minimum of 14 and up to 18 escort carriers were in the area at all times. Until 20 April, British Task Force 57, with four large and six escort carriers, remained off the Sakishima Islands to protect the southern flank, 97 The protracted length of the campaign under stressful conditions forced Admiral Chester W. Nimitz to take the unprecedented step of relieving the principal naval commanders to rest and recuperate. Following the practice of changing the fleet designation with the change of commanders, U.S. naval forces began the campaign as the U.S. 5th Fleet under Admiral Raymond Spruance, but ended it as the 3rd Fleet under Admiral William Halsey. Japanese air opposition had been relatively light during the first few days after the landings. However, on 6 April, the expected air reaction began with an attack by 400 planes from Kyushu. Periodic heavy air attacks continued through April. During the period the 26th March to the 30th April, 20 American ships were sunk and 157 damaged by enemy action. For their part, by the 30th of April, the Japanese had lost more than 1,100 planes to Allied naval forces alone, 102 between 6 April and the 22nd of June, the Japanese flew 1,465 kamikaze aircraft in large-scale attacks from Kyushu, 185 individual kamikaze sorties from Kyushu, and 250 individual kamikaze sorties from Formosa. While U.S. intelligence estimated there were 89 planes on Formosa, the Japanese actually had about 700, dismantled or well camouflaged and dispersed into scattered villages and towns, the U.S. 5th Air Force disputed Navy claims of kamikaze coming from Formosa. The ships lost were smaller vessels, particularly the destroyers of the radar pickets, as well as destroyer escorts and landing ships. While no major Allied warships were lost, several fleet carriers were severely damaged. Land-based Shinyo-class suicide motorboats were also used in the Japanese suicide attacks, although Yushijima had disbanded the majority of the suicide boat battalions before the battle due to expected low effectiveness against a superior enemy. 
the boat crews were reformed into three additional infantry battalions. Chapter 2 Section 1, Operation Tengo Operation Tengo was the attempted attack by a strike force of ten Japanese surface vessels, led by Yamato and commanded by Admiral Seichi Ito. This small task force had been ordered to fight through enemy naval forces, then beach Yamato and fight from shore, using her guns as coastal artillery and her crew as naval infantry. The Tengo force was spotted by submarines shortly after it left the Japanese home waters, and was intercepted by U.S. carrier aircraft. Under attack from more than 300 aircraft over a two-hour span, the world's largest battleship sank on 7 April 1945, after a one-sided battle, long before she could reach Okinawa. Of Yamato's screening force, the light cruiser Yahagi and four of the eight destroyers were also sunk. The Imperial Japanese Navy lost some 3,700 sailors, including Admiral Ito, at the cost of 10 U.S. aircraft and 12 airmen. Chapter 2 Section 2 British Pacific Fleet The British Pacific Fleet, taking part as Task Force 57, was assigned the task of neutralizing the Japanese airfields in the Sakishima Islands, which it did successfully from 26 March to 10 April. On 10 April, its attention was shifted to airfields in northern Formosa. The force withdrew to San Pedro Bay on 23 April. On 1 May, the British Pacific Fleet returned to action, subduing the airfields as before, this time with naval bombardment as well as aircraft. Several kamikaze attacks caused significant damage, but as the Royal Navy carriers had armored flight decks, they experienced only a brief interruption to their forces' operations. Chapter 3 Land Battle The land battle took place over about 81 days beginning on 1 April 1945. The first Americans ashore were soldiers of the 77th Infantry Division, who landed in the Kerama Islands, 15 miles west of Okinawa on 26 March. Subsidiary landings followed, and the Kerama group was secured over the next five days. In these preliminary operations, the 77th Infantry Division suffered 27 dead and 81 wounded, while the Japanese dead and captured numbered over 650. The operation provided a protected anchorage for the fleet and eliminated the threat from suicide boats. 50 to 60 on the 31st of March, Marines of the Amphibious Reconnaissance Battalion landed without opposition on Case Shima, four islets just eight miles west of the Okinawan capital of Naha. A group of 155mm long tom artillery pieces went ashore on the islets to cover operations on Okinawa, 57. Chapter 3 Section 1, Northern Okinawa The main landing was made by the 24th Corps and the 3rd Amphibious Corps on the Heichi beaches on the western coast of Okinawa on L Day, the 1st of April. The 2nd Marine Division conducted a demonstration off the Minotoga beaches on the southeastern coast, to deceive the Japanese about American intentions and delay movement of reserves from there, 68-74. Tenth Army swept across the south-central part of the island with relative ease, capturing the Kadena, and the Yomitan airbases within hours of the landing, 67-9-74-5 to in light of the weak opposition, General Buckner decided to proceed immediately with phase two of his plan, the seizure of northern Okinawa. The 6th Marine Division headed up the Ishikawa Isthmus and by the 7th of April, had sealed off the Motobu Peninsula, 138 to 41 six days later on 13 April, the 2nd Battalion, 22nd Marine Regiment, reached Hedo Point at the northmost tip of the island. By this point, the bulk of the Japanese forces in the north were cornered on the Motobu Peninsula. Here, the terrain was mountainous and wooded, with the Japanese defenses concentrated on Yedake, a twisted mass of rocky ridges and ravines on the center of the peninsula. There was heavy fighting before the Marines finally cleared Yedake on 18 April. 141 to 8, however, this was not the end of ground combat in northern Okinawa. On 24 May, the Japanese mounted Operation G.I. Go, a company of Jayatsu Kutiatai commandos were airlifted in a suicide attack on Yomitan. They destroyed 70,000 U.S. gallons of fuel and nine planes before being killed by the defenders, 
who lost two men. Meanwhile, the 77th Infantry Division assaulted EA Island, a small island off the western end of the peninsula, on 16 April. In addition to conventional hazards, the 77th Infantry Division encountered kamikaze attacks and even local women armed with spears. There was heavy fighting before the area was declared secured on 21 April, and became another airbase for operations against Japan, 149-83. Chapter 3 Section 2, Southern Okinawa While the 6th Marine Division cleared northern Okinawa, the U.S. Army 96th and 7th Infantry Divisions wheeled south across the narrow waste of Okinawa. The 96th Infantry Division began to encounter fierce resistance in west-central Okinawa from Japanese troops holding fortified positions east of Highway No. 1 and about 5 miles northwest of Shuri, from what came to be known as Cactus Ridge, 104 to 5 the 7th Infantry Division encountered similarly fierce Japanese opposition from a rocky pinnacle located about 1,000 yards southwest of Arakachi. By the night of 8 April, American troops had cleared these and several other strongly fortified positions. They suffered over 1,500 battle casualties in the process while killing or capturing about 4,500 Japanese. Yet the battle had only begun, for it was now realized that these were merely outposts, guarding the Shuri Line, 105 to 8. The next American objective was Kakazu Ridge, two hills with a connecting saddle that formed part of Shuri's outer defenses. The Japanese had prepared their positions well and fought tenaciously. The Japanese soldiers hid in fortified caves. American forces often lost personnel before clearing the Japanese out from each cave or other hiding place. The Japanese sent Okinawans at gunpoint out to obtain water and supplies for them, which led to civilian casualties. The American advance was inexorable but resulted in a high number of casualties on both sides 110 to 25 as the American assault against Kakazu Ridge stalled, Lt. Gen. Yushijima, influenced by Gen. Cho, decided to take the offensive. On the evening of 12 April, the 32nd Army attacked American positions across the entire front. The Japanese attack was heavy, sustained, and well organized. After fierce close combat, the attackers retreated, only to repeat their offensive the following night. A final assault on 14 April was again repulsed. The effort led the 32nd Army's staff to conclude that the Americans were vulnerable to night infiltration tactics, but that their superior firepower made any offensive Japanese troop concentrations extremely dangerous, and they reverted to their defensive strategy, 130-7 the 27th Infantry Division, which had landed on 9 April, took over on the right, along the west coast of Okinawa. General John R. Hodge now had three divisions in the line, with the 96th in the middle and the 7th to the east, with each division holding a front of only about 1.5 miles. Hodge launched a new offensive on 19 April with a barrage of 324 guns, the largest ever in the Pacific Ocean theater. Battleships, cruisers, and destroyers joined the bombardment, which was followed by 650 Navy and Marine planes attacking the Japanese positions with napalm, rockets, bombs, and machine guns. The Japanese defenses were sighted on reverse slopes, where the defenders waited out the artillery barrage and aerial attack in relative safety, emerging from the caves to rain mortar rounds and grenades upon the Americans advancing up the forward slope, 184-94 a tank assault to achieve breakthrough by outflanking Kakazu Ridge failed to link up with its infantry support attempting to cross the ridge and therefore failed with the loss of 22 tanks. Although flame tanks cleared many cave defenses, there was no breakthrough and the 24th Corps suffered 720 casualties. The losses might have been greater except for the fact that the Japanese had practically all of their infantry reserves tied up farther south, held there by another feint off the Minotoga beaches by the 2nd Marine Division that coincided with the attack, 196-207 at the end of April, after army forces had pushed through the Machinato defensive line, the 1st Marine Division relieved the 27th Infantry Division and the 77th Infantry Division relieved the 96th. When the 6th Marine Division arrived, 
the third amphibious corps took over the right flank and 10th army assumed control of the battle, 265. On the 4th of May, the 32nd army launched another counter-offensive. This time, Yushijima attempted to make amphibious assaults on the coasts behind American lines. To support his offensive, the Japanese artillery moved into the open. By doing so, they were able to fire 13,000 rounds in support, but effective American counter-battery fire destroyed dozens of Japanese artillery pieces. The attack failed, 283-302 Buckner launched another American attack on the 11th of May. Ten days of fierce fighting followed. On the 13th of May, troops of the 96th Infantry Division and 763rd Tank Battalion captured Conical Hill. Rising 476 feet above the Yonabaru coastal plain, this feature was the eastern anchor of the main Japanese defenses and was defended by about 1,000 Japanese. Meanwhile, on the opposite coast, the 1st and 6th Marine Divisions fought for Sugarloaf Hill. The capture of these two key positions exposed the Japanese around Shuri on both sides. Bucker hoped to envelop Shuri and trap the main Japanese defending force, 311 to 59 by the end of May, monsoon rains which had turned contested hills and roads into a morass exacerbated both the tactical and medical situations. The ground advance began to resemble a World War I battlefield, as troops became mired in mud, and flooded roads greatly inhibited evacuation of wounded to the rear. Troops lived on a field sodden by rain, part garbage dump and part graveyard. Unburied Japanese and American bodies decayed, sank in the mud and became part of a noxious stew. Anyone sliding down the greasy slopes could easily find their pockets full of maggots at the end of the journey, 364-70 from 24-27 to 27 May the 6th Marine Division cautiously occupied the ruins of Naha, the largest city on the island, finding it largely deserted, 372-7 on the 26th of May aerial observers, saw large troop movements just below Shuri. On the 28th of May marine patrols found recently abandoned positions west of Shuri. By the 30th of May the consensus among army and marine intelligence was that the majority of Japanese forces had withdrawn from the Shuri line, 391-2 on the 29th of May the 1st Battalion, 5th Marines occupied high ground 700 yards east of Shuri Castle and reported that the castle appeared undefended. At 1015 Company A, 1 5th Marines occupied the castle, 395-6 Shuri Castle had been shelled by the battleship USS Mississippi for three days before this advance. Due to this, the 32nd Army withdrew to the south and thus the Marines had an easy task of securing Shuri Castle. The castle, however, was outside the 1st Marine Division's assigned zone and only frantic efforts by the commander and staff of the 77th Infantry Division prevented an American airstrike and artillery bombardment which would have resulted in many casualties due to friendly fire, 396 The Japanese retreat, although harassed by artillery fire, was conducted with great skill at night, and aided by the monsoon storms. The 32nd Army was able to move nearly 30,000 personnel into its last defense line on the Kian Peninsula, which ultimately led to the greatest slaughter on Okinawa in the latter stages of the battle, including the deaths of thousands of civilians. In addition, there were 9,000 IJN troops supported by 1,100 militia, with approximately 4,000 holed up at the underground headquarters on the hillside overlooking the Okinawa naval base in the Oraku Peninsula, East of the airfield, 392-4 on the 4th of June, elements of the 6th Marine Division launched an amphibious assault on the peninsula. The 4,000 Japanese sailors, including Admiral Ota, all committed suicide within the hand-built tunnels of the underground naval headquarters on the 13th of June. 427 to 34 by the 17th of June, the remnants of Yushijima's shattered 32nd Army were pushed into a small pocket in the far south of the island to the southeast of Itaman, 455 to 61 on the 18th of June, General Buckner was killed by Japanese artillery fire while monitoring the progress of his troops from a forward observation post. Buckner was replaced by Major General Roy Geiger. Upon assuming command, 
Geiger became the only U.S. Marine to command a numbered army of the U.S. Army in combat, he was relieved five days later by General Joseph Stilwell. On 19 June, General Claudius Miller Easley, the commander of the 96th Infantry Division, was killed by Japanese machine gun fire, also while checking on the progress of his troops at the front, 461 The last remnants of Japanese resistance ended on 21 June, although some Japanese continued hiding, including the future governor of Okinawa Prefecture, Masahide Ota. Yushijima and Cho committed suicide by seppuku in their command headquarters on Hill 89 in the closing hours of the battle, 468-71 Colonel Yahara had asked Yushijima for permission to commit suicide, but the general refused his request, saying, if you die there will be no one left who knows the truth about the Battle of Okinawa. Bear the temporary shame but endure it. This is an order from your army commander, 723 Yahara was the most senior officer to have survived the battle on the island, and he later authored a book titled The Battle for Okinawa. On the 22nd of June 10th Army held a flag arising ceremony to mark the end of organized resistance on Okinawa. On 23 June a mopping-up operation commenced, which concluded on 30 June. 471-3 on 15 August 1945, Admiral Matome Agaki was killed while part of a kamikaze raid on Iheajima Island. The official surrender ceremony was held on 7 September, near the Kadena airfield. Chapter 4, Casualties Okinawa was the bloodiest battle of the Pacific War. The most complete tally of deaths during the battle is at the Cornerstone of Peace Monument, at the Okinawa Prefectural Peace Memorial Museum, which identifies the names of each individual who died at Okinawa in World War II. As of 2010, the monument lists 240,931 names, including 149,193 Okinawan civilians, 77,166 Imperial Japanese soldiers, 14,009 American soldiers, and smaller numbers of people from South Korea, the United Kingdom, North Korea and Taiwan. The numbers correspond to recorded deaths during the Battle of Okinawa from the time of the American landings in the Kerama Islands on 26 March 1945, to the signing of the Japanese surrender on 2 September 1945, in addition to all Okinawan casualties in the Pacific War in the 15 years from the Manchurian incident, along with those who died in Okinawa from war-related events in the year before the battle, and the year after the surrender. 234,183 names were inscribed by the time of unveiling and new names are added each year. 40,000 of the Okinawan civilians killed had been drafted or impressed by the Japanese army and are often counted as combat deaths. Chapter 4 Section 1 – Military Losses Chapter 4 Section 1 – Subsection 2 – American The Americans suffered over 75,000 to 82,000 casualties, including non-battle casualties, of whom over 20,195 were dead. Killed in action were 4,907 Navy, 4,675 Army, and 2,938 Marine Corps personnel. The several thousand personnel who died indirectly at a later date are not included in the total. The most famous American casualty was Lieutenant General Buckner, whose decision to attack the Japanese defenses head-on, although extremely costly in American lives, was ultimately successful. Four days from the closing of the campaign, Buckner was killed by Japanese artillery fire, which blew lethal slivers of coral into his body, while inspecting his troops at the front line. He was the highest-ranking U.S. officer to be killed by enemy fire during the Second World War. The day after Buckner was killed, Brigadier General Easley was killed by Japanese machine gunfire. The famous war correspondent Ernie Pyle was also killed by Japanese machine gun fire on Ie Shima, a small island just off of northwestern Okinawa. Aircraft losses over the three-month period were 768 U.S. planes, including those bombing the Kyushu airfields launching kamikazes. Combat losses were 458, and the other 310 were operational accidents. At sea, 
368 Allied ships, including 120 amphibious craft, were damaged while another 36, including 15 amphibious ships and 12 destroyers, were sunk during the Okinawa campaign. The U.S. Navy's dead exceeded its wounded, with 4,907 killed and 4,874 wounded, primarily from kamikaze attacks. American personnel casualties included thousands of cases of mental breakdown. According to the account of the battle presented in Marine Corps Gazette, more mental health issues arose from the Battle of Okinawa than any other battle in the Pacific during World War II. The constant bombardment from artillery and mortars coupled with the high casualty rates led to a great deal of personnel coming down with combat fatigue. Additionally, the rains caused mud that prevented tanks from moving and tracks from pulling out the dead, forcing Marines to leave their comrades where they lay. This, coupled with thousands of bodies both friend and foe littering the entire island, created a scent you could nearly taste. Morale was dangerously low by May and the state of discipline on a moral basis had a new low barometer for acceptable behavior. The ruthless atrocities by the Japanese throughout the war had already brought on an altered behavior by many Americans resulting in the desecration of Japanese remains, but the Japanese tactic of using the Okinawan people as human shields brought about a new aspect of terror and torment to the psychological capacity of the Americans. Medal of Honor recipients from Okinawa are Beaufort T. Anderson, 13 April Richard E. Bush, 16 April Robert Eugene Bush, 2 May Henry A. Courtney Jr., 14-15 May Clarence B. Craft, 31 May James L. Day, 14-17 May Desmond Doss, the 29th April to the 21st May. John P. Fardy, 7 May. William A. Foster, 2 May. Harold Gonsalves, 15 April. William D. Halliburton, Jr., 10 May. Dale M. Hansen, 7 May. Louis J. Haig, Jr., 14 May. Albert L. Kinzer, 4 May. Fred F. Lester, 8 June. Martin O. May, 19-21 April. Richard M. McCool, Jr., 10-11 June. Robert M. McCurious, Jr., 7 June. John W. Marr, 19 June. Edward J. Moskiller, 9 April. Joseph E. Muller, 15-16 May. Alejandro R. Ruiz, 28 April. Albert E. Schwab, 7 May. Seymour W. Terry, 11 May. Chapter 4 Section 1 Subsection 3 Allied Naval Vessels Damaged and Sunk at Okinawa. The following table lists the Allied naval vessels that received damage or were sunk in the Battle of Okinawa between 19 March, 30 of July, 1945. The table lists a total of 147 damaged ships, five of which were damaged by enemy suicide boats, and another five by mines. One source estimated that total Japanese sorties during the entire Okinawa campaign exceeded 3,700, with a large percentage kamikaze, and that the attackers damaged slightly more than 200 Allied vessels, with 4,900 naval officers and seamen killed and roughly 4,824 wounded or missing. The USS Thornton is not listed as it was damaged as the result of a collision with another U.S. ship. Those ships in a pink background, and with an asterisk were sunk or had to be scuttled due to irreparable damage. Of those sunk, the majority were relatively smaller ships, these included destroyers of around 300 to 450 feet. A few small cargo ships were also sunk, several containing munitions which caught fire. Those ships whose names are preceded by a hash pound sign, were scrapped or decommissioned as a result of damage. Chapter 4 Section 1 Subsection 4 Japanese Losses The U.S. military estimates that 110,071 Japanese soldiers were killed during the battle. This total includes conscripted Okinawan civilians. 
A total of 7,401 Japanese regulars and 3,400 Okinawan conscripts surrendered or were captured during the battle. Additional Japanese and renegade Okinawans were captured or surrendered over the next few months, bringing the total to 16,346, 489 This was the first battle in the Pacific War in which thousands of Japanese soldiers surrendered or were captured. Many of the prisoners were native Okinawans who had been pressed into service shortly before the battle, and were less imbued with the Imperial Japanese Army's no-surrender doctrine. When the American forces occupied the island, many Japanese soldiers put on Okinawan clothing to avoid capture, and some Okinawans would come to the Americans' aid by offering to identify these mainland Japanese. The Japanese lost 16 combat vessels, including the super battleship Yamato. Early claims of Japanese aircraft losses put the total at 7,800, 474 However later examination of Japanese records revealed that Japanese aircraft losses at Okinawa were far below often repeated U.S. estimates for the campaign. The number of conventional and kamikaze aircraft actually lost or expended by the 3rd, 5th, and 10th air fleets, combined with about 500 lost or expended by the Imperial Army at Okinawa, was roughly 1,430. The Allies destroyed 27 Japanese tanks and 743 artillery pieces, some of them eliminated by the naval and air bombardments but most knocked out by American counter-battery fire. Chapter 4 Section 2, Civilian Losses, Suicides, and Atrocities Some of the other islands that saw major battles in World War II, such as Iwo Jima, were uninhabited, or had been evacuated. Okinawa, by contrast, had a large indigenous civilian population, U.S. Army records from the planning phase of the operation make the assumption that Okinawa was home to about 300,000 civilians. According to various estimates, between a tenth and a third of them died during the battle, or between 30,000 and 100,000 people. The official U.S. 10th Army count for the 82-day campaign is a total of 142,058 recovered enemy bodies, with the deduction made that about 42,000 were non-uniformed civilians who had been killed in the crossfire. Okinawa Prefecture's estimate is over 100,000 losses. During the battle, American forces found it difficult to distinguish civilians from soldiers. It became common for them to shoot at Okinawan houses, as one infantryman wrote. There was some return fire from a few of the houses, but the others were probably occupied by civilians, and we didn't care. It was a terrible thing not to distinguish between the enemy and women and children. Americans always had great compassion, especially for children. Now we fired indiscriminately. In its history of the war, the Okinawa Prefectural Peace Memorial Museum presents Okinawa's being caught between Japan and the United States. During the 1945 battle, the Imperial Japanese Army showed indifference to Okinawans' safety, and its soldiers even used civilians as human shields or just outright murdered them. The Japanese military also confiscated food from the Okinawans and executed those who hid it, leading to mass starvation and forced civilians out of their shelters. Japanese soldiers also killed about 1,000 people who spoke in the Okinawan language to suppress spying. The museum writes that some were blown apart by shells, some finding themselves in a hopeless situation were driven to suicide, some died of starvation, some succumbed to malaria, while others fell victim to the retreating Japanese troops. With the impending Japanese defeat, Civilians often committed mass suicide, urged on by the Japanese soldiers who told locals that victorious American soldiers would go on a rampage of killing and raping. Ryukyu Shimpo, one of the two major Okinawan newspapers, wrote in 2007, There are many Okinawans who have testified that the Japanese army directed them to commit suicide. There are also people who have testified that they were handed grenades by Japanese soldiers to blow themselves up. Thousands of civilians, having been induced by Japanese propaganda to believe that American soldiers were barbarians who committed horrible atrocities, killed their families and themselves to avoid capture at the hands of the Americans. 
some of them threw themselves and their family members from the southern cliffs where the Peace Museum now resides. Okinawans were often surprised at the comparatively humane treatment they received from the American enemy. Islands of Discontent, Okinawan Responses to Japanese and American Power by Mark Selden states that the Americans did not pursue a policy of torture, rape, and murder of civilians as Japanese military officials had warned. American military intelligence corps combat translators, such as Teruto Tsubota managed, to convince many civilians not to kill themselves. Survivors of the mass suicides blamed also the indoctrination of their education system of the time, in which the Okinawans were taught to become more Japanese than the Japanese, and were expected to prove it. Witnesses and historians claim that soldiers, mainly Japanese troops, raped Okinawan women during the battle. Rape by Japanese troops reportedly became common in June, after it became clear that the Imperial Japanese Army had been defeated, 462 Marine Corps officials in Okinawa and Washington have said that they knew of no rapes by American personnel in Okinawa at the end of the war. There are, however, numerous credible testimony accounts which note that a large number of rapes were committed by American forces during the battle. This includes stories of rape after trading sexual favors or even marrying Americans, such as the alleged incident in the village of Katsuyama, where civilians said they had formed a vigilante group to ambush and kill three black American soldiers who they claimed would frequently rape the local girls there. Chapter 4 Section 2 Subsection 2 Mext Textbook Controversy there is ongoing disagreement between Okinawa's local government and Japan's national government over the role of the Japanese military in civilian mass suicides during the battle. In March 2007, the National Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology advised textbook publishers to reword descriptions that the embattled Imperial Japanese Army forced civilians to kill themselves in the war to avoid being taken prisoner. Next preferred descriptions that just say that civilians receive hand grenades from the Japanese military. This move sparked widespread protests among Okinawans. In June 2007, the Okinawa Prefectural Assembly adopted a resolution stating, We strongly call on the government to retract the instruction and to immediately restore the description in the textbooks so the truth of the Battle of Okinawa will be handed down correctly and a tragic war will never happen again. On 29 September 2007, about 110,000 people held the biggest political rally in the history of Okinawa to demand that MEXT retract its order to textbook publishers regarding revising the account of the civilian suicides. The resolution stated, It is an undeniable fact that the multiple suicides would not have occurred without the involvement of the Japanese military, and any deletion of or revision to is a denial and distortion of the many testimonies by those people who survived the incidents. In December 2007, MEXT partially admitted the role of the Japanese military in civilian mass suicides. The ministry's textbook authorization council allowed the publishers to reinstate the reference that civilians were forced into mass suicides by the Japanese military, on condition it is placed in sufficient context. The council report stated, it can be said that from the viewpoint of the Okinawa residents, they were forced into the mass suicides. That was not enough for the survivors who said it is important for children today to know what really happened. The Nobel Prize winning author Kenzaburo Oe wrote a booklet that states that the mass suicide order was given by the military during the battle. He was sued by revisionists, including a wartime commander during the battle, who disputed this and wanted to stop publication of the booklet. At a court hearing, Oe testified mass suicides were forced on Okinawa Islanders under Japan's hierarchical social structure that ran through the state of Japan, the Japanese armed forces and local garrisons. In March 2008, the Osaka Prefecture Court ruled in favor of Oe, stating, it can be said the military was deeply involved in the mass suicides. The court recognized the military's involvement in the mass suicides and murder suicides, 
citing the testimony about the distribution of grenades for suicide by soldiers and the fact that mass suicides were not recorded on islands where the military was not stationed. In 2012, Korean Japanese director Pak Sunam announced her work on the documentary New Shigafu collecting living survivors' accounts to show the truth of history to many people, alleging that there were two types of orders for honorable deaths one for residents to kill each other and the other for the military to kill all residents. In March 2013, Japanese textbook publisher Shimizu Shoin was permitted by MEX to publish the statements that orders from Japanese soldiers led to Okinawans committing group suicide and the army caused many tragedies in Okinawa, killing local civilians and forcing them to commit mass suicide. Chapter 5, Aftermath 90% of the buildings on the island were destroyed, along with countless historical documents, artifacts and cultural treasures, and the tropical landscape was turned into a vast field of mud, lead, decay and maggots. The military value of Okinawa exceeded all hope. Okinawa provided a fleet anchorage, troop staging areas, and airfields in proximity to Japan. The U.S. cleared the surrounding waters of mines in Operation Zebra, occupied Okinawa, and set up the United States civil administration of the Ryukyu Islands, a form of military government, after the battle. In 2011, one official of the prefectural government told David Hurst of The Guardian. You have the Battle of Britain, in which your airmen protected the British people. We had the Battle of Okinawa, in which the exact opposite happened. The Japanese army not only starved the Okinawans but used them as human shields. That dark history is still present today, and Japan and the US should study it before they decide what to do with next. Chapter 5 Section 1 Effect on the Wider War Because the next major event following the Battle of Okinawa was the total surrender of Japan, the effect of this battle is more difficult to consider. Due to the surrender, the next anticipated series of battles, an invasion of the Japanese homeland, never occurred and all military strategies on both sides which presupposed this apparently inevitable next development were immediately rendered moot. Some military historians believe that the Okinawa campaign led directly to the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, as a means of avoiding the planned ground invasion of the Japanese mainland. This view is explained by Victor Davis Hansen in his book Ripples of Battle. Because the Japanese on Okinawa, were so fierce in their defense, and because casualties were so appalling, many American strategists looked for an alternative means to subdue mainland Japan, other than a direct invasion. This means presented itself, with the advent of atomic bombs, which worked admirably in convincing the Japanese to sue for peace, without American casualties. Meanwhile, many parties continue to debate the broader question of why Japan surrendered, attributing the surrender to a number of possible reasons including, the atomic bombings, the Soviet invasion of Manchuria, and Japan's depleted resources. Chapter 5 Section 2 – Memorial In 1995, the Okinawa government erected a memorial monument named the Cornerstone of Peace in Mabuni, the site of the last fighting in southeastern Okinawa. The memorial lists all the known names of those who died in the battle, civilian and military, Japanese and foreign. As of June 2008, it contains 240,734 names including 382 Koreans. Chapter 5 Section 3, Modern U.S. Base Significant U.S. forces remain garrisoned on Okinawa as the United States forces Japan, which the Japanese government sees as an important guarantee of regional stability, and Kadena remains the largest U.S. air base in Asia. Local residents have protested against the size and presence of the base. Chapter 5 Section 4 Sources Primary Sources Secondary Sources